So today's going to start to start to finish video, and um, I've got a few shots that I'm going to get done, and I'll do one of the edits is going to be at the end of this video or a bit later on in the video, and then uh, a couple of the other edits will be done uh, in a few days' time. Um, it's going to be a bit of a mixed bag this one, so it's going to be a bit of exposure blending. So there's a specific location I want to go to for that one. And uh, I've got to stop waffling because the, um, the sun's about to rise. Green tool. And this morning's little... Uh... Oh, look at that over there. Yeah, this morning's little one is... What a bit of um, uh, exposure blending. Which we're going to go to another location for that one. But I'm uh, going to start to finish vid. And uh, left in such a rush this morning. And I've got my little, little light on my camera to show me ugly mush. But I've left the bloody thing at home. Anyway, we're we'll going to make do with what we can until that sun rises. So, uh, Oh, you're not really missing much, man. You're only missing the ugly mush. Let's rush to that location and uh, get started. It is seven minutes past five. And I'm actually going to break some rules on this one because normally you'd have your horizon on the upper or lower third. This one's going down straight down the middle, and there are reasons behind that. And that's because I want to capture quite a lot of the actual coastline, which will be coming sort of on the on the, the lower left, sweeping in to roughly where the sun is going to rise. But I needed to get a little bit, just a little fraction of where Old Harry is on the like the middle left. Now, because we don't have much cloud cover on that here, there's a few little wisp bits over there which are going to give some real nice oranges. If I'd have had that on the upper or the lower third, there'd have been too much of one or the other. So if I'd have had the horizon on that lower third, there'd have been too much just blue emptiness. And if I'd have had it too low down, so the horizon would have been on the upper third, I'd have had too much of the dark coastline, which I didn't want. So to balance it out, I've actually gone straight down the middle. I'm not going to expose your bracket this one, purely because I want to keep that shadow. There's another location I'm going to go to, and I'll probably edit, and I'll edit that one another time, uh, which is pretty similar, but it's going to be after that sun has, has ridden, risen, so I'm going to leg it to there to get that one. But this one, I really gonna like it. So when that sun pops up, yeah, it's gonna be beautiful. So settings wise, um, you know, I'm gonna change the ISO, drop that down a little bit. Uh, settings wise, let's have a look how that's looking. That's a bit better. Um, you got ISO 200 because at the moment we're actually in the blue hour, which you'd probably go around about 400. But I'm dropping it down 200 because once that sun rises, it's gonna brighten it up. So I don't want to go too high. Um, F11, and you should see we're looking about six of a second. So one of the things is, why would you expose your blend? Well, the thing is, if you've got a, uh, an area which is dark and an area which is light, and you want to get both <laughs> to be colourful, bright and vibrant, you're, you're going to need to expose your uh, blend. And the reason you might do this is, one of the objects like here, where you've got the light coming at you, is one of the 
areas is going to be dark and the other one's going to be pretty light. So I'm shooting in here where the foreground in front of me is pretty dark and the background obviously it's the sun coming up is going to be pretty bright. So when you look at it you're going to get a silhouette of the darker area which is the foreground in front of me. But if you're going to want to have the colour and in that foreground there are times when you're going to need to expose your blend. And what this is basically is, is you're taking three sometimes it's two or more but in this situation it's going to be three one will be the correct exposure which is what you, you set your camera at the correct exposure so your little meter is going to go that's correct but the foreground is going to be dark so then what you need to do is you overexpose now you're overexposing for the foreground this will then literally blow out the background which is going to be the sunrise it's going to be just totally washed away and you're going to see virtually nothing just a white thing across the screen but then you want to then underexpose which will be for the background which in this case is the sunrise and then blend them together uh, you normally you're going to use like Lightroom or equivalent software tool which is capable of creating this high dynamic range this will then basically mash the three together to create that final image. And I'm still just waiting for that sun to rise. <laughs> but it's always good to get here early. So on this one here, I have actually done the, the photo that I wanted, which was, oh, that's the moon behind me, look. Um, this is what I wanted, because I wanted the silhouette with the sunrise. Now I have taken, just taken this one and of the three different exposures i'm probably not going to use that one later on in the video because i've got the one that i actually want to do which is a different location uh, for that so uh, but it's just in case you want to get there <laughs> it is too i don't need to exposure blend then uh, i've got this one that i could do at the end of the video I cater for all eventualities mate just throw it in a mix as well. Ramped up that uh, uh, F number, so I've really closed that aperture right, right, right down. Just trying to get a bit of starburst. And I did that one on the uh, on the M50. Looks nice. So now, let's get to that second part. It's about a 10 minute walk. <laughs> yeah, it never gets easy looking at this crap on my back. <sighs> you know what, it's all worth it in the end. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. But all will be okay I move on each and every day The past is where it stays Way back a year ago I've changed for the better this time I thought I would never be fine I strive just to say I'm alright and for the first time in a long time, I'm alright I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain So this is the actual one I wanted <clears throat> to show for the uh, exposure blending and the reason I've got to do this one is the bottom left of the image there's a sign, it says rest and admire if I get the correct exposure for this 
the background, which is going to be on the upper left third, the sign is on the lower right third. So the upper left is out of exposure, way out of exposure, because the sun is coming from that right hand side and it's coming in and it's just, it's washing everything out. But if I expose for that background, which is Peveril Point and the old Harry way, way, way back in the background, you're not gonna be able to read the sign. So this is where exposure blending is gonna come in. So we're gonna do three exposures, as I said before. So three exposures, one under, one correct, one over, and we're gonna blend them together. Settings wise, uh, ISO 100 F13, and the correct exposure is a sixth of a second. I've done two stops under, two stops over. There we go, that's the uh, shots taken. Um, I'll probably, I'll, I'll decide when I get back, but I'm probably gonna do the, um, the, the one that I've just taken here, the uh, rest and admire. Um, I'll have a quick look at that when I get back. So, uh, see you at home. All right, so here we are, at home. And um, I don't want to go over too much of the editing. It's mainly just about the, the, the blending process. Um, I'm going to do a few tweaks and, and, and stuff, which we'll go over, but uh, I'm trying to keep this video as short as possible because these all-in-ones do tend to drag on a bit. Anyway, um, as you all know, I use Lightroom, and I use Lightroom for basically it's simplicity now it looks complex but it, it's actually really simple once you've got over the um the the, the look and the layout and think what does this controls do and all the rest of it obviously just play around with it because you learn quite a bit just by moving sliders and that back and forth you you, you get to learn a lot anyway you like room for about probably about 90 percent of my work uh, the other 10 percent is done in uh, photoshop um, one of the things that I do tend to use quite a lot of at the moment in Photoshop is the AI part of the generative fill. Now I know I did sort of not give it a good review at first, but actually when I did other things with the generative fill, I'll leave a link to one of the examples, uh, which is basically removing objects. It is amazing. It really is so quick and so simple and i use that um, quite a bit for removing objects i do use the patch tool for smaller objects but for larger objects i use a generative fill even though it's still in beta yeah i can't wait for the final version to come out to be honest anyway let's not waffle on let's get straight into um the editing part so <clears throat> um ignore this bottom bit there's a lot of photos that i took uh, on the day, some to do with the video, some not to do with the video, some to do with the project that I'm doing. There's quite a lot on there, so ignore all that at the bottom. The three that we're interested in are these three down on the bottom right. So, um, as you can see, the normal exposure on here, you can't really see the sign very well. Um, if we go to the Overexposure, yes, you can see it clearly, but you've washed out the back. You can't even see Pebble Point, which is one of the idea. It's what you want in this sort of a shot. So we're going to blend the three that we've taken together, and it is so simple in Lightroom. It's unreal. You select your three. If it's more that you've say you've took say five different exposures or six different exposures, then Lightroom will blend however many together. So, bottom right corner, we've got the three selected. <clears throat> we right click, photo merge, HDR. Lot of room will now do its part. Doesn't take very long. Make sure that you have auto align, auto settings checked. Okay, the auto align will align the three photos together, even though when you've taken them, you didn't move the tripod or didn't move anything because it'll go, you know, it'll take a shot, take a shot, take a shot there might be a minute movement in there and things don't line up and will look blurry and horrible. So always do the auto line, it will align them, okay? Ghost, uh, de-ghost amount, I always leave it on medium. I tend to find that for quite a lot of the things I've done um, to be the better of the options. When you look at it, 
you'll see here it says show deghost overlay. If you see red parts on the image that you've done, that's where the, 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 the ghosting is. Uh, this looks pretty good. Okay, now the preview that you've seen here is the three merged together. There is a little bit of work that I need to do on this one because I can see that the, the sky is still pretty white. I think I was slightly over on the correct exposure. Um, but it's not a problem because we can fix a lot of this in Lightroom, which is what we're here for. I'm actually quite happy with that. Looks pretty good. Um, I did notice one thing when actually when I got home and I had to look at this that well, you can see my bag. But do you know what? I think it actually adds to the scene because, well, if you're going to rest and admire the view, the chances are you're going to have a camera or quick or kit or whatever. So I'm not going to remove it. I'm actually going to leave this one in. So, yes, I'm happy with that. So we're going to merge. This will take a few seconds. So we're just going to leave it to do its part. And I mean, just, I mean, to be fair, my Lightroom is pretty quick and quite a lot of things that it does, um, especially if you've got a powerful machine. Um, so yeah, it's... It's, it's quite good to have a, a machine that's capable of doing it. So there we go, that is all merged. It's finished in the top corner it says. So let's click on the merged. That's the merged one. So that's, let's just double click on that one there. That's one, that's the under, that's the over. That is the correct one where it's merged them all together. Really, really simple. Uh, a couple of tweaks we're gonna do. Uh, I'm going to see if we can save some of the sky. So we're going to create a bit of a mask here. So let's go with a brush because I do not want to use a linear gradient. Uh, this is going to probably be quite tricky really because there's a lot of gaps in the trees. But let's just do our best. It hasn't got to be perfect. But let's just see what we can do. Let's just go around that area very quickly. Let's get my top corner. Probably a bit in the middle of the tree is probably going to be best as well. I think it's probably going to be the best. I'm going to be able to get that. So let's just drop the exposure down just a tweak. I'm going to keep going. Right, I'm going to hold there because it's now starting to alter the exposure on the branches. And Let's just drop the shadows down a little bit and the whites just a little bit and might increase that contrast. We're starting to look a bit weird on here, so I'm not going to go much further than that. I don't think we're going to leave it there. I'm trying to save this sky, uh, but we're starting to affect the water on that as well. Yeah, this is going to be a bit of a tricky one. Uh, Dehaze, let's just. Get a bit of dehaze in there, don't want to go too much. See, we started to go over on here, so I may, may just leave that as that is, to be fair. I don't think I'm going to be able to save it too much, but it doesn't look too bad, so I'm pretty pleased with that one. Uh, sharpening, I do this on everything. Alt key on your sharpening, hit the mask button, and we want just the outlines of everything. Crank up the sharpening. Uh, the AID noise you, you can't do on um, these merged files. So if you ever do need to use the um, AID noise in Photoshop, then do it on three. On the, th on the three first, then merge. Um, I've had a bit of mixed results on, on how that works, but yeah, pretty good. Now, vignette, let's just really drop that in because we really want to try and guide people into that rest and admire scene. I mean, I will say that the, uh, the rest and admire plaque itself, I've got to say, really disappointed me when I got there because. Um, it looks like it hasn't actually been because they, they tend to sort of clean these quite often and it looks like it doesn't need doing which is a bit of a shame but still still sort of visible uh, I did one a few years ago actually here and it hadn't long been cleaned and it, it actually you know was standing out quite a lot 
Um, yeah, that's it. I think I'm not going to do too much with that because, like I said, I'm not really going to go over the top with the editing. Um, I might actually try and bring the colour up a little bit more. Yeah, just a little bit. Um, yeah, increase that temperature just a little bit. It's really made the the, the, the the greens of the trees and that come out that a little bit more. Do like that and saturation. I am going to just tweak literally plus four, literally just a minute small amount. I might tweak up that vibrance just that little bit more as well. Don't think I'm going to be able to do much with that sign to make it pop because um, obviously it's a bit of a dirty sign so there's not really much I can do. Um, noise wise there isn't going to be any on here at all because yeah there isn't. So there we go and I'm just going to leave it as that because I'm pretty pleased with that. Not too pleased with the sky to be fair. Uh, my own fault. Bit of an error in field but Okay, as I wasn't really that happy um, with the way that the, the, the sky part was. So what I actually did was I actually removed the mask that I did because it was too tricky trying to get in between the trees. Instead, I've just put a linear gradient in actually on the top, which goes all the way down and I've just dropped down that exposure. It's actually to me it looks a lot better than the mess that I've actually made before so yeah I wasn't it's it, it was my own fault actually in the field because yeah it's one of them but it happens and yeah I think this looks pretty good it's still drawing you in um, which I like so it's just a shame I couldn't have got the blue more of the sky but I still think it looks effective another all-in-one and I hope you found it useful and uh, got more of these to come and uh, so until the next time take care stay safe and i'll see you soon